although the trees barricaded the island's edges, inside that wall was an open nave. Lifted on the pillars of hemlock, a green ceiling vaulted high overhead. In a column of light, red columbine nodded and orchids bloomed. The mossy green carpet was clean, but not just clean, it had been swept of all of its litter. As if someone were expected to come along with a dustpan to sweep them up. If I hadn't recognized these as scent posts of river otters, I would have imagined small nuns singing softly as they glided across the transept with little brooms, the space that was perfectly cared for. There splayed on the mossy bank as if on an altar was the corpse of a bald eagle gone mostly to bones. She lay on her back with her wings spread looking toward the east. Only a few magnificent feathers of flight stuck to the reaching wing bones. There was the jutting keel of her breast and a cage of ribs above scattered vertebra, dull and half buried in the moss. At the top of the spine was her skull, staring with empty eye sockets along the crest of her ferocious beak. Whoa, my grandsons whispered, but I too could not have been more surprised to have found her in the dim light of this wild island. We circled the eagle, touched her. The little boys crouched beside her and stroked her beak. I didn't know what to think there in the presence of this majestic death and two small, eager lives. So much loss surrounds us. I was born into a world packed with life and beauty without much noticing. I have lived through the destruction of almost half of it, plowed or burned, poisoned or killed, transmogrified into products or human flesh, leaving the world half stripped to its rocky bones. So much peril surrounds the children who were born to this planetary decision point, soon to witness the rapid reinvention of human civilization or its slow extinction. Extinction. Extinguish. Cause to cease burning. All the astonishing lives. <laughs>